हेलो एंड नमस्कार वेलकम टू माय चैनल फिजियो ट्रेंड्स दिस इज द फिजियो क्वेस्ट सीरीज एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस क्वेश्चन नंबर 26 एंड 27 इट्स आंसर इट्स क्लिनिकल रीजनिंग एंड एवरीथिंग सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन नंबर 26 एंड इंफॉर्मेशन गिवन इन दैट क्वेश्चन नंबर 26 गोस समथिंग लाइक दिस which says that a patient comes to the clinic for left elbow tendonitis the treatment plan is friction massage phonophoresis and exercise followed by icing so which of the physiological response listed below generally occurs from the cold treatment option given to us are option a which is increased respiratory rate increased cardiac output option b which is increased stroke volume increased tidal volume and increased interstitial blood flow to the organs option c decrease stroke volume decrease interstitial blood flow to the internal organs and option d decrease respiratory rate decreased tidal volume so now my dear friends this is a very simple question we just have to understand what is the effect of icing on our body on our areas of the body basically what happens because of icing is there will be vasoconstrictions of the vessels and because of that after that there will be blood rush to that particular area blood circulation will be improved and because of that we can expect that there will be recovery faster so that is why option c and d we can easily eliminate because in that everything is decreasing and that is not the case when it comes to the icing option number a where it says that there is increase in tidal volume and cardiac output now basically yes cardiac output tidal volume uh, which is like respiratory rate which may increase but along with that one more important thing is that that there will be improved circulation to the internal organs and that is given in the option b that is why option b will be correct over here for the answer of this question right now let's know what happened in question number 27 and how to answer it question number 27 goes something like a therapist is attempting to gain external rotation range of motion in a patient's right shoulder the therapist decides to use contract relax contract antagonist in what order should the following rotator cuff muscles contract to perform this movement successfully option given to us are infraspinatus teres minor subscapularis supraspinatus teres minor infraspinatus or supraspinatus subscapularis in this first we have to determine which muscles are there which are producing the internal rotators and as well as external rotations and we know that these two muscles are your subscapularis and supraspinatus subscapularis is going to help you for internal rotation and supraspinatus is going to help you for external rotation now next thing what we need to understand in this is what is contract relax and contract antagonist activity in the pnf stretching now basically this technique is very simple what we do is we just contract the antagonist muscle hold it for the 5 to 10 seconds relax it and automatically what happens the agonist muscle starts functioning well and because of that we can improve the range of motion in the agonist activity so here we want to improve the external rotation so that is why antagonist will be what it will be internal rotators so internal rotators are what subscapularis so that is why we have to contract the subscapularis first and then we have to contract the supraspinatus so that is why the correct answer which is option b subscapularis and supraspinatus so i hope guys you have got these answers correctly and you have understood the clinical reasoning behind these answers if you still have any doubts do let me know in the comment section i will be very happy to help you all and don't forget to follow physiotrends for more and more questions like this